Well, hello everybody. Welcome back into the Color Gemstone Academy. I am Paul DC, your instructor. This is my YouTube channel, Paul DC Gemstone. So if that's what you're looking for, you're in the right place. Well, I want to thank all of you who have been faithfully subscribing to my channel. I really do appreciate that. We're between, I think almost 1,350 subscribers. If you have not subscribed, however, please do that for me. Uh, do me a favor because it is free. It doesn't cost you a penny, but it allows and motivates me to keep doing these lessons for you. So this week is going to be the seventh and final member of the Garnet family in our little Garnet mini series that we've been doing. So it's a little bittersweet. I've always said Garnet is one of my absolute favorite gemstones and one of the most underrated and underpriced gemstones on planet Earth. And more importantly, it's completely natural. It's not treated. But this one is going to be on the mixed variety of garnets. Now, what does it mean to say it's the mixed varieties of garnets? Well, basically, it's a mixture of two different other types of garnet that creates a completely different look. Now, as a reminder of how we started this whole garnet mini-series was way back in episode 48, and we talked about garnet 101. And in that in case you missed it. In that episode, we talked about there are aluminum members of the Garnet family and there are calcium members of the Garnet family. And that's what all of those lessons we've done up until now, we've been talking about. So let's put that chart back on the screen so you can see it again. And you're going to see on the left side of the aluminum, there's a chart of the aluminum members. On the left side, you're going to see that you have almondine, pyrope, and spessartine garnets. Now we've already covered each of those varieties in some of the previous lessons that we've done in our mini series. But now let's focus on the right side of the chart of the aluminum members and you're going to see it says mixed varieties. Why do they call those mixed varieties? Because they're a mixture of all these aluminum members. Rhodolite garnet is a mixture of almondine and pyrope garnets. Did you ever see, like if you have friends that have kids and as they're growing up, you say, oh, look, she has her mother's eyes or wow, she has her father's smile. Well, that's because that child is kind of a mixture of the mom and the dad. Well, the same is true with the rhodolite. Rhodolite garnet is a mixture of the, gar of the almondine and the pyrope garnets. So if almondine and pyrope had a baby, it's going to be a rhodolite garnet. Conversely, if pyrope and spessartine had a baby, it would create what's called the malaya garnet. So let's start off this particular lesson talking about rhodolite garnet because rhodolite garnet is a very, very popular uh, and relatively affordable gem that has been used and sold in a lot of jewelry these days. Now, before we get into the specifics of both the rhodolite and the malaya garnet, those mixture garnets, um, let's talk about what they all have in common. So once again, just as a reminder, they're all garnets. So that means they're all going to be the birthstone for the month of January, whether it's a rhodolite, spessartine, Malaya, any of the varieties we talked about, it's a birthstone for the month of January. Uh, number two, it is the second wedding anniversary stone. So if you're looking for variety to give on that second wedding anniversary, you can pick any of those garnet colors and it's going to be appropriate. Uh, if you follow the signs of the zodiac, the uh, garnet zodiac stone happens to be for Aquarius. So if you're an Aquarian like me, then, and you wanted to celebrate your astrological sign, you would choose the garnet and that's for January 21st through February 21st. Now the chemical composition, again, it's going to be slightly different whether we're talking about the rhodolite mixed garnet or we're talking about the malaya mixed garnet. In the case of the rhodolite, its chemical composition is magnesium, iron, aluminum, silicate. 
But then you get into the Malaya garnet, which is a mixture of the pyrope and the spessartine. It's a magnesium manganese aluminum silicate. So slightly different in its uh, chemical composition. Now that crystal structure, which is again, consistent with all of the members of the garnet family, it's a cubic crystal structure, the same as a diamond. That means like a four-sided box is the crystal structure. Um, the hardness, six and a half to seven and a half. The toughness, fair to good. Refractive index, about 1.865. For again, for those who don't know what the refractive, refractive index is, is it has um, a measurable sparkle. So when you're measuring gemstones for sparkle, we think about a diamond. And that's going to be about 2.42. Uh, we get into the zircon and the colored gemstones. It's about as high as you can get. It's close to two. I want to say 196, 197, something like that. Well, your garnets are really up there too. In this particular case, 1.865. So very, very close, I would say, to uh, kind of a ruby, uh, kind of a zircon. Not quite the diamond, but a, a great specific gravity nonetheless. And then the specific gravity, again, that's the heft of the gemstone, and that's going to be important later on in this lesson. It's uh, between 3.78 and 3.85. So very, very close to the specific gravity or heft of a ruby and a sapphire. And now we forge on to the rhodolite variety of garnet. Now, I do love this stone. I saw plenty of these on places like QVC and HSN shopping channels, as well as up at uh, Shop NBC, which became uh, Evine and it became Shop HQ. I think it's the name that it is right now. It's a beautiful variety of garnet that can be a pink to a red to a purplish variety of garnet and no treatments whatsoever. It's a completely natural, untreated gemstone, no heating, no dyeing, no irradiation. Nothing is done to improve the color of this except faceting and polishing the stone. It uh, was first officially discovered in Cowie County or Cowie Valley in Macon County, North Carolina in the year 1898. Now, where did the name rhodolite come from? Well, again, two Greek words, lithos for stone, that's where the light comes from. And rhodon is for rose or rose-like. And I think that when in the case of the stuff first discovered in North Carolina, it was really reminiscent of the rhododendron flower or bush. And you can see the, the colors of those. And there's a variety of colors, but some of them are right in that wheelhouse of that purplish uh, red color. So that's a good way, way to remember what rhodolite and how it was named and what it was named after. Um, so it can be from pink to red to purple. Uh, and the name that came from that rhodon, which is the Greek word, shares sort of that root with some other pink and reddish gemstones in the gem kingdom like rhodochrosite, which is a, again, a beautiful opaque stone. I love that one. Or the uh, rhodonite, not to be confused with rhodolite, which is another one that's, that's similar to the rhodochrosite, but where rhodochrosite has kind of uh, white flashes in it. In the rhodonite, you have the black flashes with that pink, both uh, just beautiful gemstones. I do recall, and this is why I said it's going to be important to remember that specific gravity lesson I was talking about a little bit earlier. I recall when I was at the Tucson Gem Show one year, and his name escapes me. He was working for a big stone company at that time, uh, but he was a miner from Brazil. And he was telling me about when rhodolite was discovered in Brazil because that's where he spent all of his time and at the mines uh, for this company in Brazil. And he told me this story of how it was discovered. And of course, you all know that um, Brazil is known for being the largest supplier in the world of amethyst, that beautiful purple stone. And he was telling of a, uh, a hunter who was walking in the forests of Brazil and he was a hunter that was using a slingshot as his hunting weapon of choice. 
and he picked up a, a rock off the, of the floor of the, of the uh, forest and he thought it was an amethyst. It was a beautiful purple stone. But he was pretty savvy because a lot of people are in the gem business or in the fringes of the gem business in Brazil. And he said, it looks like an amethyst, but it's just a little bit too heavy. So he kept the rock. And then when he left his hunting trip, he went home and he went to a gemologist to try and identify the stone. Now, remember what we talked about with the one of the ways to identify a gemstone is that specific gravity or the heft of the stone. He knew it didn't feel right to him. So it turns out that it was then um, identified as a newer form of garnet coming out of Brazil, which was the rhodolite. And remember the amethyst specific gravity 2.65. Okay, that's pretty good. You take a look at the specific gravity for the road like garnet, 3.84. Now you're saying, wait a minute, that doesn't seem like that's that much different. But that little difference is a big difference because that means it's almost 50% heavier or more dense than what that amethyst is. So that's that was a... It was a great story. Uh, whether it's true or not, I don't know, but it's a really great story on how sometimes gems are misdiagnosed when they're first picked up and then you find out it's something else altogether. Okay, so now you have a little bit of the backstory on that rhodolite garnet. And rhodolite garnet remains a very, very popular and relatively affordable gemstone. And I highly recommend if you don't have any in your collection, you will love to have some of that rhodolite garnet. Okay, so now we move into another interesting story. And this is the next of the mixed variety of garnets from the aluminum family. Once again, we look at the right side of that aluminum members card in the mixed varieties. And you see below the road light we just talked about, you're going to see something that is called Malaya garnet. Malaya garnet is a combination of the uh, spessartine and pyrope garnet. So once again, if pyrope and spessartine garnet had a baby, then it might end up looking like a malaya garnet. Now what does a malaya garnet look like? Well, the colors uh, is a light to dark, slightly pinkish orange, reddish orange, or even yellowish orange gemstone. Now the name Malaya is translated from the Swahili language. Now, when I went to uh, the Tanzanite mines, I was in Tanzania. And Swahili is the native tongue of many of the indigenous people in both Kenya and in Tanzania. Now in Tanzania, the actual language happens to be English, is, is the language of commerce but what is spoken by most of the locals is Swahili. So I, I've made an effort to try and learn a little Swahili and that always serves you well when you're going to a country to do that. So the name Malaya roughly translated is outcast or prostitute. Okay, now where does that come from? <laughs> well, when this was first discovered, and I want to say it was in the 1970s, nobody wanted it. It was an outcast. It was considered a prostitute. It wasn't like the other garnets. It wasn't what they were looking for. And so and there was not much of a market for it. But it's sort of the comeback kit because I'm going to show you some beautiful specimens, some beautiful colors, and it is very, very rare. So a lot of collectors have coveted this stone. And so it's come a long way since the 70s because now it's considered like the fine quality of Malaya can be some of the more expensive garnets that you're ever going to see. Um, but that's going to wrap it up for our lesson on the mixed variety of garnets. Whew. We did a lot of garnets in the last couple of weeks, didn't we? Uh, so we're going to move on to some more subject matter and some of the things that you have requested. So that I wanted to remind everybody 
First, if you do like the stories that you're hearing, please hit that subscribe button. It doesn't cost you a penny, but it really helps me continue to do these for you and to keep these lessons free for you. Um, so every sun, I'm sorry, every Saturday at 10 a.m. Eastern time is when a new lesson on gemstones drops. And then on uh, Wednesdays at 5 p.m. is when we have our Q&A series. And then I answer questions that you've asked. So if you do have some questions, just put it in the comment section on there and I will read it and hopefully answer one of yours. Uh, questions in the future. Thanks so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. We'll see you all next week. Thank you for watching the Colored Gemstone Academy. Bye-bye, everybody.